Hey guys, so we've got a new core for N64 for your PlayStation Classic. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys quickly how to download it, where to put it, and how to configure it so that way it runs properly on your PlayStation Classic. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is download the new optimized core. So what we need to do is open up our web browser and we need to go to this link right here. As always, I will leave the links directly in the description below so you guys can go ahead and click there and download them nice and quickly. So this core is an optimized Mupin 64 core. Uh, they've taken it and they've optimized it so it runs substantially better than the base core that was on the PlayStation Classic build. So what you can do is you can download this dump it into your PlayStation Classic and you will have better experiences with your N64 games so what we need to do is we need to download this file right over here I'm gonna go ahead and save it right to my desktop and what you're gonna get is the actual core file you don't need to extract it you don't need to do anything with it we just need to go ahead and close down our web browser and you can see the uh, the core is right here what we need to do next is open up our USB drive and make sure that our USB drive is plugged directly into our computer. We're going to go ahead and access that. And when we open up the root of our USB drive, what we need to do is double click on the BleemSync folder, then the OPT folder, RetroArch.config, RetroArch again, and then our Cores folder. And just as simply as that, we just click and drag and copy it in. You can see that it is now copied in there and that's it. Now we close it and we just have to pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic. So let's go ahead and switch over there now. All right guys, so here we are on the boot menu. We're gonna go ahead and enter into RetroArch. And what I'm gonna do really quickly is just show you that the core is loaded. So I'm gonna click on load core and then we're gonna scroll down And we're going to find Nintendo 64, and then you can see there's a Nintendo 64, Mupin 64 Plus, Mupin 64 Plus Dash Next, that's the new one that we installed, and then we've also got Parallel N64. Um, I have tested out a few games with the Next and the Plus. Uh, they, the Plus works reasonably well, but Next just takes things to a little bit of uh, the next level. It, uh, it's more optimized, games run a little bit cleaner, you have less graphical errors, you have less audio issues. Uh, keep in mind, this is still a work in progress. You're not gonna have perfect emulation with every single game that you try. In fact, there's going to be lots of games that you're gonna have lots of problems, lots of graphical issues, um, as with most N64 emulators, but this is about as good as it has gotten so far. And uh, it's, it's, running, it's running really well. So what we need to do is, um, first what we wanna do is we have to configure our controllers. And in order to configure our controllers, we need to load content. So as you guys remember, I've got all my playlists here, but if I were to select a game from the playlist here, it's gonna automatically pull up the default emulator, which is the Mupin 64, and we don't want that. We want the new one, the plus next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull content. I'm going to locate my media file on my USB drive. I'm gonna select my RetroArch games. I'm gonna go down to N64, and I'm gonna pick a game. Uh, I think for the purposes of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up um, GoldenEye 007. There it is, and I'm going to open that, and then it's going to give me the option on which emulator I want to load. So with the Mupin 64 Plus, the game is playable, but you have a lot of graphical issues. You've got a lot of frame rate issues. Um, the audio is all weird, uh, and I find that it does run much better with the Mupin 64 Plus dash next so um, there are still some audio issues there is certainly still some slowdown but it's a lot more playable and it's it's a lot more enjoyable so i'm going to go ahead and load that up perfect so now that it's loaded up we're going to go ahead right away and press start and select to get our uh, quick menu and what we need to do is we need to scroll down to controls and the reason we want to do this is because we need to assign the analog stick um, to function with one of our analog sticks on our uh, PlayStation controller. So what I've got right now is I've got a PS4 controller plugged into my 
PlayStation Classic. That's currently what I'm using for RetroArch, and I typically recommend this. I've seen some other people suggest that you can just map the analog stick to your D-pad, and then your, your D-pad will act as both the D-pad and the analog stick from the N64 controller, but that doesn't work for a lot of games because a lot of games make use of both the D-pad and the analog stick. So what I recommend is finding some other controller, Xbox, Xbox 360, PS3, PS4 controller, um, anything that has an analog stick so that way you guys can access both your D-pad and your analog separately. So we're going to scroll down and we need to find all of our automatically configured buttons and here we are. So now you can see the left analog stick um, right the left analog stick left and then down and then up and what we want to do is i've already got it pre-configured but you can see on the right hand side it says control stick x plus and then control stick x minus so what that's saying is the control stick which would be the um the analog stick from the n64 and your x is your x-axis so if you're thinking about a graph you've got an x-axis going horizontally and you've got your y-axis going vertically uh, so when you've got your right you're going to go x plus when you've got left, you've got X minus. When you've got down, it's Y plus. And when you've got up, it's Y minus. So just keep that in mind when you guys are configuring. Uh, that's how I've got it set up and it seems to be working properly. Other than that, then you just go ahead and back out and you can load the game up. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you guys how that is. So you guys can see there, there's a little bit of stuttering, there's a little bit of a frame rate issue, but it's really not all that terrible. It's certainly, uh, it's certainly a lot better than a lot of people have found with the previous core. And we're going to go ahead and skip that. We're going to get right into the main menu. So now I'm able to control my analog with my left analog stick on my PS4 controller. So you can see that I'm moving around and I'm going to go ahead and open up a new folder. I'm going to select the mission and I'm going to select the dam and we're just going to choose agent and start. And we're going to skip it and just jump right into the game. All right, so here we go. And so far it is feeling pretty good. Don't have any major issues yet. So you guys can notice there is a little bit of frame rate issues. You can see how it's kind of stuttering and glitching a bit. But it's definitely still playable. Now, I haven't played this in years, so bear with me here. I'm not the greatest GoldenEye player anymore. But the interesting thing about this is I haven't played this game in probably the better part of 15 years and I still remember I still remember every single thing about it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and back out of this game and we're going to just try another game as well. There it is, and we're going to load up the Mupin 64 plus dash next. Hello. Okie dokie. Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool. Peach.
There we go. So you can see that Mario 64 is running really nicely. Not having any issues with this. We can... Move in and out with our camera. Yeah, everything seems to be working really well. Okay, so why don't we try one more game? Let's do uh, Super Smash Brothers. That's one of the most iconic N64 games we've got going. So we're gonna load up Mupin 64 and see how all that goes. So we can see right away that there is definitely some audio issues, some audio stuttering. A little bit of video stuttering there, but uh, it's not terrible. Let's actually get into some gameplay and let's see, uh, let's see how the game actually plays. Well, you can see that I'm clearly not very good at this game. Holy smokes. This is so much different than the uh, the latest Smash that just came out. It feels so different. Well, the game feels fairly playable. I mean, the audio is not fantastic, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely playable. So as long as you don't mind the audio, you can definitely get along with the game. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. All right. So if you're happy with the, uh, the new core that they've got all you've got to do is reconfigure if you've previously built your your playlist you just need to go into your settings so we're going to go into our settings we're going to go into our playlist settings and then in our n64 playlist we're just going to change it to the mupin 64 so it's not this one but it is this one so i know you can't really see it on screen but if i if i press the left key while I'm on the first Mupin 64 Plus, it'll stay there, which indicates to me that it is the other one. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go to our configuration file. We're gonna save the current configuration. So that is now saved and that's pretty much it. So that's it guys. That's how you load up the new N64 core and you get a lot better quality and a lot more playable games there. Uh, again, just a reminder, it's not perfect. There's still gonna be lots of issues, but this is pretty good. Thanks a lot for watching, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys again soon.